Now we're going to talk about proton ring configuration. When I was putting together the key ring atom, I tried to come up with a standard way to identify how each atom laid out in the key ring configuration. In the book I called it uh, a mole number, short for molecular numbering. Well, since then, I think proton ring configuration is m a much better way to identify. So from here on out, that's what I call proton ring configuration. And what we're going to show you now is we're going to show you uh, three elements and one isotope. And we're going to show you how the numbering system works. And, and, and it's just based off of more or less the atomic weight. So if the atomic weight of something is four, that's how many rings it's going to have in here. We're going to show you how we're going to identify each of those numbers as we go through that. So as we come over here, we will show you now what the proton ring configuration is. Our first element that we did here was uh, hydrogen, one proton ring. In this case, we're going to call the proton ring configuration a C1. C stands for center. One tells you how many items are in the center. Now the other thing that we came out with was when items are hooked together, we call them legs. This here is the hydrogen isotope, deuterium, one proton, one neutron, there's the element, uh, key full key ring atom. In this case, we call it a 1L2, or one leg, two items in the leg. Now our next element, this one here, is this is the old configuration here, is helium. It has an atomic number of two, because it's the second one on the periodic table, but it has an atomic weight of four. So in the old theory, they accounted for it with two protons, two neutrons. What I have now is I have four uh, proton rings hooked together in the center. So this one here is now C4. That's how it's defined. Very simple. The next one, that we have is lithium. Now lithium is the third element. It has an atomic number of three, of course, but its atomic weight is seven. So it has one extra ball. It kind of violates the, the own, their own theory. And why, I don't know, but it just does. And so whenever you, you look at this atom here, uh, you, you see that it has uh, this valence shell also. The, the longer item. So whenever a valence shell is there, it has the ability to hook to one other element. So to account for that, what we did was I took the uh, five uh, proton rings, put them in the center, and then to add in for the valence, a place for it to hook to another element, I added in a leg to it. So the uh, Proton ring configuration for this is C5-1L2, a center of five, one leg of two items. And as we go through these elements, we're going to see that this leg here is what it hooks to. So I'm going to use valence the same way as they do now as a connection point, but I'm going to do it with legs. Now, the other thing is, as we go through here, as we build these atoms, the proton rings at the center are going to get denser. Like this is denser than helium. And it's going to give it a heavier weight, which is what we have in the real world. So that's what we're doing with the proton ring configuration is a way to identify the center of each atom and how many legs and how it hooks. And we will be doing a lot more with each element as we go along. As you can see, these elements and the isotopes are going to be pretty easy to understand once we get them all laid out. And the reason is, physics and chemistry are easy with the correct geometry.